Okay, so now after having reviewed Tory Pines, which is the latest course I played, I now reviewed the course I played before Tory Pines, which is Santa Barbara Golf Club. This is a little a course, or you know, it's one of those pocket courses which is surrounded by houses, and it is in the center. I would say the northern center of Santa Barbara. It's just off 154. As a matter of fact, I found it. I was actually going up 154, and I just happened to drive by the course, and I saw it. I was like, well, I got to check this out. And it looked like it could be a some kind of country club, but it wasn't. It's just a, a nice neighborhood golf course, and it's not really even a neighborhood golf course. It just happens to be in the center, more or less western center of um, Santa Barbara. It's off Cafe Royale, uh, Real, Cafe Real, and it's in that pocket between Cafe Real and 101, where 101 swings south and then goes back to the um, east. And uh, I don't know if Mendocino or I don't think it's that far south down uh, 101, but in any case, it's not far from 101. It's just like a, maybe five blocks off 101. You go down State Street, and it's like down at the western part of State Street where it gets really nice. And it's, um, a course, I would say the rating of this course is probably about 130 also. Uh, I have a scorecard, and I um, haven't looked it up in golf now and so forth, but I, I don't think it was really more than about a 130, 135 course from the back tees. But it was a short course. It was only about 6,700, 6,800 yards from the back tees. Now, the one thing I will say about this course is it was a really fun course to play, especially it's a good course to play if you play with someone who's a good player, who I actually had the benefit of playing with this one guy who apparently plays the course a lot, works in the area, and he plays the course often. And it was a fun challenge. I, was, I had a good time playing um, this round with him. He was a little bit better than I am. You know, he knew the course better. He knew what shots to play and so forth, and... I was still, you know, at least hanging with him. I beat him on a couple of holes. Some holes he beat me on. You know, it was it was one of those things where um, if you got into the sand traps around the green, um, it, they could, you know, if you didn't have a great sand game, and I don't have a great sand game, you know, that could be trouble. The course is tight enough. It's not um, super tight, but it's challenging tight, challenging enough tight. There's um, road passing by the, Ninth, uh, the 10th fairway, all down the left side of the 10th fairway, and um, road passing by the 11th fairway, all down the side of the 11th fairway, and um, there's a big crevice type of thing going on in the center of the course, so the 4th and 5th, and like the 7th and 8th, and, and the 11th, 12th and 13th fairways and so forth play along the side of this crevice. It has a good uh, left to right action, and it has good um, tee to green action, and some of the holes you play across a, a, cre a deep crevice, probably about 50, 50 uh, yards to the bottom of the crevice back up. And there's actually two or three holes like that. So it's, it's tight, but it's not easy. It's not too tight, and it's not too easy, and it's not too hard, and um, it's not really too challenging, but it does give you some, you know, some blind looks uh, where you have to hit, you can't quite see what's going on. And I thought it was really kind of fun. It reminded me of a lot of some courses, some of my favorite courses, like um, the North Course at Andrews, or South, is it, is it, yeah, South Course at Andrews, and the East Course at Andrews, and um, one of the courses I played down in, in uh, Dallas, which I liked and, and uh, reviewed uh, very well. Although it wasn't soaking wet like that course when it got, when it rained, which it did rain a lot in Texas. Of course, you know, it didn't rain hardly at all before I played this round. And it was, it was a nice course. Uh, same kind of um, action. Not really too many elevated greens. Not too much sand. It did have some elevated greens with swales and so forth around the back. And you had to be careful, you know, not bouncing balls off the side of the greens in places. So it was challenging enough. I think, I think this would be a solid 130 course, despite the fact that it was short. And it was tight enough that the, the holes were sort of in a ribbon around that you do have a lot of greens next to tees and, and tee shots where guys are hitting balls into your fairway and things like that. 
but it wasn't so tight that you couldn't go into adjacent fairways and hit back into your fairway, which I, I always try to remark that is something I usually consistently will mark a course down for, being able to go off in, into the adjacent fairways and play back into your own fairway. My opinion is you hit a tee shot well off your fairway, that ball should be gone, okay? That that is one of the main reasons you don't spray balls around a course is you don't find them if you hit way off the fairway. Now, some of the holes you hit and there's a good chance of that happening, but also some holes you hit, and there isn't a really good chance of that happening. It, a lot of courses that tend to play around in loops and stuff or fold back on top of um, other holes, there's a good chance that on one side of the hole of the holes, you can hit off into the adjacent fairways and still play back. Whereas on the other, other side of the hole, there's a fence or there's waste or there's a fairway or there's, you know, out of bounds or something even. And this course was much like that. Uh, it, it just wasn't, um, you just had to have a smart choice of shot on which side you're going to play to. And you had to not spin or pull shots way offline, you know, away from where you're trying to hit. So it does kind of require a, a decent control and it will penalize a beginning to beginning intermediate golfer who doesn't have good control of their shots and does tend to pull shots or does tend to hit slices, it will definitely penalize that level of golfer, but a reasonably decent golfer can always go back and, and, and um, if they hit to adjacent fairway, they can track their ball and they can play back. And I did that quite a few times. I'm not going to de deny that I, I pulled a couple of shots. You know, you, you know every, every, everybody, you know, unless they're, you know, a low handicap player is going to pull shots or, or spin shots off, off the fairway. And, and it's, it doesn't kill you if you do that. But there are places where you will lose, ball, lose balls if you do that. So it was, it was nice enough like that. So I wouldn't call it a really super tough course. But it was challenging enough. It did have enough verticality to be challenging. It did have good enough greens with the, enough sand around them to be challenging. You know, it, it wasn't a bad course to play. I had fun. It was a fun course to play. And it wasn't that expensive. It was $40 or $50 with a cart at twilight on a Friday. And twilight started at 12 o'clock. So 12 o'clock in this part of California, beautiful weather. The only thing you have to worry about is around 4.35 o'clock, it's going to start to get dark. And um, so we did have trouble finishing our round. Um, it was definitely starting to get dark at the end. And my photos will reflect that. But when you start playing golf in California, you know, at five at twelve o'clock and it's a beautiful day, it's it sorry, that doesn't suck. I don't care what anybody says. That I can live with that. I can live playing golf under these conditions. And this course had decent grass, decent sand, different decent greens. Uh, the greens weren't even aerated. There it was just nice, smooth putting, nice and, and quick. You know, it was a really nice round of golf. And I will mark this course negatively for a few things, okay? Number one, there's, this, there's an airport, the Santa Barbara Airport, which is not far from the course. So we had jets, we had small planes, we had choppers on the, you know, flying around. Number two, there are a number of, ro of roads that are near the course, just off the course. So we had traffic noise, you know, just like any other neighborhood woods course and a lot of medium decent not neighborhood woods courses that have roads passing right by them same kind of thing here um number three it was a very busy day on the course that day so there were a lot of foursomes and it was slow and then a lot of times the marshals had to come out there and move people on and number five there were guys playing ahead of us that were drinking that weren't that good so they were slow, um, and we couldn't pass them because we were three, so we couldn't pass them. We had to deal with it. Uh, and a lot of times, we were sitting back there waiting there and watching these guys play, and we'd lose track of what's going on. We'd start talking, and the next thing you know, we, we were holding up the course. So guys behind us sitting there patiently. They didn't say a word. Sitting there patiently, and this guy and these two girls are sitting there patiently waiting for us to hit. And I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ, man, these guys are on the green. Let's go ahead and hit. You know, we could have hit, you know, two or three minutes before him, so we went ahead and hit. And we did catch ourselves doing that, you know, a couple of times, just talking, yapping, and running our mouth instead of playing. So, obviously, not a bad crowd. 
never really got into any any um, strife on the course despite that. And and that I have to admit was pretty nice. It was not often that I will consider myself to be more of a problem for people playing the course than other people playing the course were a problem for me. And this was a nice course for that. So we had a good time playing. It was a nice, good round. We not the world's longest course, not at all. Uh, other than that, a nice, fun course. I have to give it a B plus. Even given the plane noise and the road noise, because it was just a good course for a bunch of guys to get out there and play on and, and have fun. And um, I just had a great time playing it, that's all I can say. And so when I have a great time playing a course, I have to give it a decent grade, despite the occasional distraction from planes and so forth around the course. And this course definitely earned the B+. Plus. It, it was not the most challenging course but challenging enough, not the longest course, but long enough, and fun. That's all I can say. Santa Barbara Golf Course Club in Santa Barbara, California. B-plus course, roughly 130, roughly 6,800 yards from back to